A federal appeals court last night stayed the execution of a Texas death row inmate. The court granted reprieve just hours before Texas inmate Scott Panetti was set to die by lethal injection. Panetti was convicted in the 1992 shooting deaths of his in-laws. He represented himself at his trial and dressed like a cowboy and called his witnesses President John F. Kennedy, the Pope, and Jesus Christ. Panetti's lawyers have argued his, he suffered from schizophrenia for decades and is too mentally ill to be put to death. The appeals court said it needed time to, quote, consider the late arriving and complex legal questions at issue in this matter, end quote. And now that you know some of the area's Christmas events, what about all the Christmas presents? With Santa's season right around the corner, we went around campus asking South Plains College students how they feel about gift giving and receiving. South Plains College is getting ready to host the Texan Classic Basketball Tournament tomorrow night. The tournament starts Friday at 5 p.m. and the final game is on Saturday at 2. The teams participating this year are Mesa College, Coastal Bend, New Mexico Junior College, and of course South Plains. Now let's toss it over with our own George Nader, who is standing by live in the Texan Dome, where the team is beginning practice. Thanks, Chance. I'm here at the Texan Dome, where the team's practicing behind us. I'm joined here by uh, assistant coach Hag Plona. Thanks for joining us, coach. No problem. Thank you. Uh, coach, you know the Texan Classic's coming up this weekend. That's always an exciting t uh, time of the season. Uh, what are some of the things you see the team to do, uh, hope to see the team do this weekend? Well, you know, these will be our first home games of the year, so hopefully we can get off to a good start and play in front of a good crowd. Uh, you know, this, this is a real new team from last year. We have a couple kids that are coming back, but we have a lot of new faces. So uh, we had our first couple games of the year uh, in Dallas this past weekend. We played Weatherford College and beat them, and then we uh, suffered a little setback versus Trinity Valley in a, in a pretty highly anticipated game. Uh, and currently we're, we're ranking third in the country and they're second, and it was a close game right down the wire. So coming off a loss, we really need to bounce back and play in front of the home crowd and in the familiar confines, that should help. So hopefully we can, uh, uh, tomorrow night uh, versus Coastal Bend, hopefully have a good showing and, and uh, get a season off to a good start here. And uh, <clears throat> adding to what you said, you know, you guys have a lot of new players this season. How are they kind of adjusting to the fast-paced, you know, Texan team? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit different. I mean, we, we, we have some transfers that came from different schools, and we have some kids straight out of high school. So it's a different environment for everybody. But uh, but I think, you know, coming into this type of environment, trying to compete at the highest level of junior college, uh, you know, obviously we have very, very high expectations, and I think kids like to be pushed to that. So uh, it's, it's been good so far, but there's still a de a definite uh, ways to go. You know, there's uh, in October, November, we're still not quite where we want to be in February or March. So it's a process, but we're looking forward to working with this group, and hopefully we have a, a strong month of November here to build us into the league. And, uh, you know, with that being said, you also have a few returning sophomores. Are there any kind of uh, key players or someone that you kind of look to lead the Texans this season? Yeah, we, we have two major contributors off last year's team that are back. Uh, we have a guard named Andre Spite, who uh, was actually already committed to Arizona State University and will sign there next week. And uh, Dre was our leading scorer last year, so we looked to him for obviously for some offense, but as well as leadership. And uh, we have a front court player named Emmanuel Amagbo, who came off the bench in reserve role last year. But uh, he's a guy that we expect a little bit more out of this year. He can score inside. He plays very hard. He rebounds. He's actually already committed to Colorado State University, so he'll sign there next week. But Emmanuel missed our first two games, so he's actually about to practice here today for the first time in about two weeks. So it'll really help us getting him back on the floor this weekend. Right. Well, thanks again for joining us, Coach. Thank you. That was Coach Hank Plona, uh, assistant coach for the men's Texans team. Again, guys, remember to come out to support your Texans tomorrow night at 7 o'clock here at the Dome. Back to you, Chance. In NFL news, from the campus of South Plains College, this is your TB10 News Update. From the SBC TV News Center, I'm George Nader. And I'm Rene Rodriguez. Here is the latest news. Halloween may be tomorrow night, but there is a Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, activity going on this evening here at SBC. This is the first year the Design Communications Program is presenting a Day of the Dead scavenger hunt. It gets underway today at 4 and runs until 6 o'clock. Each team will start with a map at the Student Center and go to other sites from there. The cost is $5 per person, and there can be 4 to 6 people per group. There will be prizes for the winners towards the end. For the Lubbock community, the Day of the Dead holds true to tradition. Here's Stephanie Perez with their report. In the Southwest United States, a Mexican tradition has grown in celebrating the Day of the Dead. Many people have embraced the art of this holiday and are not aware of its true meaning. Pero ellos ya celebraban, ellos ya celebraban el Día de los Muertos. ¿Por qué? They would celebrate Day of the Dead 
Why? Because to them, it wasn't that they died. It was a step into a new life. This thousand-year tradition has not only been accepted by United States Americans. Later it mixed religion with culture. And it tells us the same as our wise ancestors believed in, that the dead are in God's hands. But us, as humans, we continue to believe that they are with us. And that's the reason behind our altars. In coming events for this Halloween, the Day of the Dead will be celebrated on October the 31st, which kicks off the First Friday Art Trail. And we actually offer, we have a resident ballet troupe, Ballet Folklorico Nuestra Genencia. Um, so they'll be doing traditional Mexican folk dancing. We'll offer traditional sweets, um, as well as horchata and aguas frescas. Uh, and we'll also have artwork from local schools, uh, junior highs and high schools, in the tradition of Day of the Dead. The trail starts at the International Cultural Center at 5.30, ending at the Buddy Holly Center at 9.30. Enjoy a traditional holiday and refreshments and cultural traditions of the Day of the Dead. For SPC TV, I'm Stephanie Perez. South Plains College held an annual Halloween carnival this past Thursday for the community. The carnival was held by SBC Student Services and run by different clubs and organizations to raise money. Activities included face painting, creating cupcake stands, a law enforcement sale, and many other games that kids could participate in. In national news headlines, a nurse in Maine is refusing to abide by state order to stay in isolation for 21 days after returning from West Africa where she treated Ebola patients. This is video of nurse Casey Hickox and her boyfriend leaving their home in Fort Kent for a bicycle ride this morning. Hickox says she is symptom free and has tested negative for Ebola twice. She says her civil liberties were violated when she was placed under quarantine and says she will seek legal recourse, but the state of Maine's he health official says quarantine is the only way to protect the public. I completely understand that the state's purpose is to protect the state of Maine. I have worked in public health for many years and that has always been my purpose as well. But we have to make decisions on science and I am completely healthy. You know, you could hug me, you could shake my hand. There is no way that I would give you Ebola. There are other cases where individuals have not tested positive, did not believe that they were symptomatic, and quickly developed symptoms while they were out in the public and have since been hospitalized. I do not understand why this common sense approach to ask someone to stay in their home for 21 days during the incubation period, why that is not a reasonable request. Flirt crowd and findmelove.com. If you thought Taco Bell was fast and convenient before, you're in for a pleasant surprise. The food chain recently unveiled an app that allows patrons to place customized orders using their smartphones. No, this doesn't mean delivery, but it does mean when you place your order on the app, you can skip the lines. The app lets the workers know when you're near the store so they can prepare your meal ahead of time. It's too bad about that Royals game. They were yeah, just that close. I was going for the Royals, but I guess congratulations to the Giants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And finally today, this year's corn maze near Lubbock is in full swing. Our Delaney Norris recently headed out there and has this amazing look at all the fun. For people looking for an amazing opportunity. To That's the latest news from the SBC TV newsroom. Thanks for joining us.